So if I had my own very, very popular podcast and I was able to get a variety of guests across the political spectrum on my show, there are some questions I might ask them. So if I was in Joe Rogan's or H3H3's position and I had people like Elon Musk on, maybe I would ask him about the allegations that he treats Tesla workers really badly. That's all it is. Maybe I would ask him about removing safety features from his factories because he personally doesn't like them. Does anybody go, Elon, um, maybe for yourself, but selling a flamethrower? If I had someone like Jordan Peterson on, maybe I would say to him, you do know cultural Marxism is a Nazi dog whistle that has a history rooted in fascism. Damn, you know how to nice. keep it in. That's a man's ways. If I had Joey Salads on, maybe I'd ask him why he wore a Nazi outfit. Or maybe I'd ask him why he's a Trump supporting candidate for Congress. I don't think you should bring that from a third world country to a first world country, it doesn't mix. Now, two of the biggest podcasts on YouTube are the Joe Rogan Experience and the H3H3 podcast. Now, they both get numerous famous guests and they get some controversial guests. Now, this video is gonna outline the problem with these types of podcasts, these so-called, I guess, friendly podcasts, where you'll sit down with someone and have a very friendly chat, allow them to spout everything they want, about their own ideology with very little pushback and I'm gonna talk about the damaging consequences of that. So you've seen those clips and you see how these podcasts deal with these figures. Now, I'm gonna get into why that is so damaging and there's lots of work that's been done and I am gonna reference a Surf's video as well because they did a great video on Joe Rogan and his pipeline to other far-right controversial figures. But there's this thing I like to talk about a lot. It's a thing called Orientalism and it was a book by Edward Said from the 1970s. And you might ask, how does this play into YouTube podcasts? Well, it doesn't exclusively, but he has a great argument. It's about knowledge and power. It's about if you have the platform to spread ideas, you have the power which contributes to the knowledge. So in Said's case, he would say that, you know, if a British official came back from Egypt and he wrote a book in Britain, that would then become the knowledge of Egypt. And of course, because Britain has disproportionate power compared to other countries, and when you have the power dynamic between Britain and Egypt, it's clear the Egyptians can't defend themselves. So when you have these big podcasters, they are in essence having the power over the knowledge because you can't really combat them effectively because you just can't hope to have the same platform. So the podcasters here are giving the public a snapshot of these people. And you'd think maybe if they want to give a good overall picture of this person, an accurate one, they might ask some uncomfortable questions. I'm not saying that Joe Rogan and H3H3 have to go after them with extreme venom and it has to be a complete attack the whole time. But of course you would appreciate them bringing up certain things to these controversial figures instead of, you know, smoking weed, vaping, and having an all-round joke with them. Because a lot of the fans of Joe Rogan and H3H3, they listen to all these podcasts. They might not ever see this person again, so that becomes their knowledge. They might not follow Elon Musk too closely, like many of us do. They might not know he's actually a bad guy. So they see him smoking weed, talking about sci-fi, Elon Musk is okay in my book, and then I'm gonna go out and defend him. H3H3 H3 is similar. Jordan Peterson's another one, you know, having a nice conversation with Ethan and he's vaping. Seems like an okay guy. Ethan didn't really challenge him on any of these views. And here I'm just talking about your general perception to them. So that is probably most people who watch those podcasts. They'll watch them once, get some sort of opinion on them, which will probably be positive just because of the interview styles in this, and then move on about their day but it will be cemented in their mind. And people get funny when I talk about video games in a similar way where I said things like Call of Duty, Black Ops is bad for depicting the Vietnam War in a certain way because for millions of people, that is how they will view Vietnam. And you might say that is ridiculous. You know, how can podcasts and video games influence someone's mindset? Shouldn't they just do more research? Well, there's not enough time in the day for everyone to research everything. So you do take the sound bites, you do take the little things, especially if you're not too interested in seeing another perspective, so that becomes your knowledge of it. And just a final point on this, the people who consume the podcasts and probably don't research the people, their whole mindset must be really weird because the way these podcasts work is they make every single person sound sort of rational and reasonable, apart from the real extreme ones like Alex Jones. So when they say these arguments and you don't have much pushback from the host, subconsciously or not, that gets into your own brain 
and it makes it seem like an okay argument to make. It makes it seem like these people are rational, and of course, for a lot of these guests, you don't have PhDs, you don't have master's degrees in the certain subjects they're talking about, so you just defer to them as the authority. And again, that can warp your view. And I would really hate to see, which I assume is a, few, a fair few people who do not have critical thinking skills, probably because our education is really bad, how they would end up if you just listen to all the Joe Rogan episodes or if you listen to all the H3H3 episodes. What do you look like after that? Because you have to be some sort of walking hypocrisy or contradiction because you're going to be influenced by so many different views from all around the spectrum. But let's dive a little bit deeper into the sort of pipeline and people who do become actually influenced by being exposed to these people for the first time. Now, the Surfs made a really, really good video on this, like I said before, so credit to the Surfs, but here is the little web they constructed. So, Joe Rogan has Dave Rubin on his show. Fans of Dave Rubin now start following Joe and vice versa. Then, Dave Rubin has Stefan Molyneux on his show, and the same effect occurs. Then, Stefan Molyneux does a video defending Richard Spencer, and you can see how far down the rabbit hole you've sunk. So there you guys see how it works. When you watch one of these people on a podcast, YouTube starts recommending your videos. And then when you watch theirs, you get recommended more and more and it will take you all over the place, but it will push you down this rabbit hole. And that is obviously really, really dangerous because how the podcasts work in this regard is they snag you in the first place because of the uncritical nature of them. It's sort of like fish bait, where once they get you on the hook, it's hard to get off. So Joe Rogan might, you know, platform Gavin McInnes, he might platform Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, Stefan Molyneux, and based on his interview style and his podcast format, you might not think these guys are so bad. So you're on the hook then, especially if maybe you're confused about your politics, or maybe you weren't that interested in the first place, or like I said, you don't have much critical thinking skills. But then YouTube starts feeding you more and more content. It could be this guy on other talk shows like The Rubin Report or going on Ben Shapiro's channel where he's going to find a host again who doesn't push back against their views. So that is the rod winding up and they've almost got you. And that's how people become indoctrinated into some sort of awful conservative or far right ideology which begins with the podcasts. Now H3H3 is not exactly the same. But I would say there is some correlation between their audience and Joe Rogan. I think Joe Rogan would probably be a bit more of a male audience. But I'd say they would share some demographics in terms of young people and young men making up a lot of it. So like I said with the power and knowledge stuff, when you have your one shot of these people, I think it's on the responsibility of the podcaster to at least make some attempt to either rebuke the arguments and come to the argument with at least some degree of the opposition to this person or dedicate at least a small part of their podcast if they don't want to get too heavy on some of the controversies around them just to bring it up to people who can then, if they want, go and research if this sort of stuff is legit. So with people like Elon Musk, you would bring up the stuff to do with his workplaces. You would bring up how he treats his workers. You would bring up his insane Twitter rants. With someone like Jordan Peterson, you would bring up the controversy. You'd bring up the things like cultural Marxism. This goes for all these sorts of podcasts, but I'm singling out H3H3 and Joe Rogan here as being the two most prominent. And I can understand the hesitation to do that because maybe you won't get as many guests. You want to make a platform where these people are comfortable and can come have a friendly chat. But sadly, the world is not a political. You cannot just have these things in a vacuum, especially on a platform like YouTube, where the algorithm's insidious nature will pick up on the viewing habits of the person who watched this podcast, especially if they make it through the whole way, because then they have lots of watch time on this particular figure, and it will start recommending more and more and more. That isn't filtered in terms of it will send you down the dark parts of YouTube. It will send you to the white supremacists. It will send you to the far right. It will send you to the alt right. And people like the Kleins and people like Rogan are the gatekeepers. They are the bait on the fishing hook. And don't get me wrong, these people aren't bad people. They don't necessarily have awful politics. They don't necessarily want to do this. But through their massive platform and through YouTube's algorithm, it's just inescapable that they have some sort of responsibility. Like I said, these guys have the power on the YouTube platform. And when they introduce these figures, when they have a conversation with these people, they have a lot of power over how millions of people will receive them. And like I said, many people won't ever research them again. So that becomes essentially their permanent knowledge. And the people who might want to research the people further or watch more YouTube clips, especially if they're controversial, 
might be at risk of going down this awful pipeline where it will fundamentally shift their politics and worldview. And in my opinion, it would be to the world's detriment because you get way more people believing in alt-right beliefs and conservative beliefs and far-right beliefs. And I'm sure people on the alt-right realize what a great platform people like Rogan and to a much lesser extent H3H3 are. So that is it for this video. Maybe there is something more to be said about these topics at a later time. Thanks again to the Surfs for making that great video on Rogan. Their channel and Twitch stream is really really good so go check it out i'm sure most of you who subscribe to me already do subscribe to them as well but let me know what you guys think in the comments please follow me on social media at the cavernacle on twitter that is my main one but also facebook and instagram another big one for me is my subreddit so follow me at r slash the cavernacle and then check out my personal reddit which is u slash tommy cahill 1995 give me a message if you want to also check out my second youtube channel i'm hoping to make something of this but it's just the cavernacle plus at this point and hopefully I'll upload things like live streams and maybe some little videos. But yeah, go subscribe to that if you haven't already. Check out my Patreon and WordPress in the description. Thanks to all my patrons as usual. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.